I'm Steph. And I'm Jeff. Each week, we review a film that's streaming on Netflix or Amazon Prime. As writers, we'll deep dive into the hook, plot, characters, and indie to tell you if it's a good story. Listen at your own risk. This review contains spoilers. Now sit back. Relax. And and enjoy enjoy Stream on. On. Today, we'll be reviewing Lady Bird, streaming right now on Netflix. Christine, aka Lady Bird, is a high school senior in Sacramento. She wants to go away to a city with culture for college, but the family's financial problems might prevent that. Over the course of a year, she has teen adventures, teen crushes, teen angst, and the usual teen movie problems with her mother. Will she get what she wants? Or will she wind up working at an In-N-Out Burger for the rest of her life? You have to watch to find out. Lady Bird was directed and written by Greta Gerwig, and this is Greta's directorial debut film. And she stated that it's inspired by aspects of her childhood growing up in California. It stars Saoirse Ronan as Christine Lady Bird McPherson, Laurie Metcalf as Lady Bird's mother, Marion, Timothy Chalamet as Kyle Schiebel, who is one of Lady Bird's love interest, Beanie Feldstein as Julie Steffens, Lady Bird's best friend, and Lucas Hedges as Danny O'Neill, another one of Lady Bird's love interests. So Steph, why did you choose this movie? So I like a good coming-of-age film, and this one got buzz a few years back. Um, it got nominated for some Academy Awards back in 2018. And I looked it up. It had solid reviews. And so I have been curious about this one. So yeah, figured it's on Netflix. Let's check it out. Okay. So Jeff, what did this film remind you of? It reminded me of an inferior version of Whip It. Both are movies about young women who have, are clashing with their mother's expectations. Whip It, the main character in that, finds an outlet in roller derby. But she also has many of the same teen problems, angst, relationship issues that are present in this film. Two movies are very similar in structure and the messaging. How about you? I chose the film Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko is also a coming-of-age story. It mixes a lot of dark humor into the film. I mean, it's it's a drama slash sci-fi film, but there's the dark humor mixed in. And one of the parallels is that it's about an intelligent teenager trying to navigate what they perceive to be an ordinary world. In Lady Bird's case, you know, she's very intelligent. She's trying to like navigate all the expectations around her that the adults have of her, as well as just um, teenage culture at the time. In Donnie Darko, of course, you've got very intelligent character trying to navigate um, more at a sci-fi. There's like weird things happening in time. Um, But he also has like a lot to say about culture. um, And he feels like he's sort of stuck in um, the ordinary and he's extraordinary. And that's the same feeling that Lady Bird has. And so those are some of the parallels I saw between those two films. Okay, well, let's um, jump into the hook. So Jeff, Did this film grab you in the first 15 minutes? Do you think the hook did what it needed to do to set up the characters? No. The hook has a serious problem almost immediately. There is a good scene where you have Christine and her mother, Marion, in a car. They're listening to a book on tape. Christine says this will be a good college road trip book to listen to. The implication being, you know, she's getting ready for some sort of lengthy move across country to go to college. Unfortunately, that part, which works nicely, and it's about the first 60 seconds, is immediately overshadowed by an exposition dump, a very clunky one where the two characters literally lay out all the problems that the family is facing in the movie in the most unrealistic, forced, artificial way that I think I've seen in a while. At that point, the film is already losing me at that point. The opening sequences, I mean, they do set the characters up. And there is some good acting. The interplay between Christine and Marion in general is well done. But that opening expository blob took me out of the movie almost immediately. 
How about you? So I really liked The Hook. We definitely disagree on this film. Um, I thought it was a very strong opening between the mom and daughter in the car. You get pretty quickly that they have a tense relationship. It, it's this, they have a loving relationship, but a very a tense relationship where they're clashing about what Lady Bird's dreams are and what the mom's dreams are for her daughter when it comes to going to college. Like the mom thinks Lady Bird has really unrealistic expectations about where she's going to be able to go to college. Um, Mom's more go to the state school local. It's what we can afford. And that's basically what you're performing at. And Lady Bird wants to escape to the East Coast and go to like an Ivy or a potted Ivy or a liberal arts school on the East Coast and get what she perceives as more culture. Then it just goes downhill from there. I thought it was a a good exchange um, between them and said a lot about what this struggle was going to be in the film. It grabbed me. The hook gets at the complexity of being a teenager too, where we see Lady Bird trying to navigate wanting to be different and unique, but also wanting to fit in. Uh, And that's a a classic dynamic that it's like a key developmental milestone that teenagers have to figure out. And I thought the film did a good job of looking at both sides of that dynamic. We learn a bit about her family stressors. We learn that her dad recently lost his job and the family is struggling financially they are trying to figure out how to keep paying for Lady Bird's private high school and to give her those opportunities, but balancing the fact that dad is unemployed and mom is having to take extra shifts at the hospital to make up for it. So you see like the family stressors and some of the socioeconomic dynamics that Lady Bird is exposed to because she is more middle class going to a high school that is more upper middle class to rich kids um, and her trying to navigate that as well. Um, So I thought it did what it needed to do to set up the primary dynamics in the film and characters. Well, as I said, it does present the characters, some of their traits, some of the conflicts. The question isn't with the hook isn't always, does it present those things? It's how does it do it? That opening that exposition dump is so clunky and ponderous. Many of the points, I should say, are repeated in the rest of the hook. We get to actually then see some of the stressors. The rest of the hook basically follows that standard movie maxim, right? Show, don't tell. The problem is we've literally had a three-minute or so block of them telling us everything, and they being the screenplay writer. I don't disagree when you say that the hook sets the characters up or gives them their primary conflicts it's how it does it was so bad that that's just dragged me out of the movie immediately and it had i had a hard time getting past that it is that bad to me wow no i i didn't see it as bad i thought it was funny and witty and good screenwriting like i i thought it like i found the opening like it was satirically funny like it and, and it's a darker comedy right but i i found it witty screenwriting in the sense of their not only showing a complicated relationship relationship between a mom and daughter, but also just the complexities of growing up in like the late nineties in California and some of the cultural dynamics at play. And I, it, if it felt over the top, I think it was just because it was, you know, it was meant to be satire. The only question I would have is when you say it was supposed to be satirical, there clearly are elements of satire in this film. So I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm not certain what's satir- satirical about an exposition dump. That just struck me as the writer's like, here's what this movie is going to be about. Here are all of our conflicts. I want to lay it all out for you. And then I'm going to show you them, which makes me wonder why do this. And I had other issues with the writing, which we can get into. But yeah, clearly we saw the hook very differently. And that's fine. So we can move on to the plot if you'd like. A couple things to point out about the plot. So the first dynamic that I thought the film did a really good job with um, from a writing standpoint is the mother-daughter relationship. Both characters I found to be rich and well-developed. 
um, you know, you've got that opening car scene, which you hated, but I really liked um, where they, you know, you see them connecting. There's this emotional moment where they finish listening to the audiobook Grapes of Wrath and they connect and, and there's this just poignant, like they say a lot with just their body language. Um, and you can tell they're in sync with how they feel about the book. And then things go downhill very rapidly. Um, ma- her mom is loving, but also really hard and critical of her. And um, I thought the film did a good job showing that you can be both, um, that you can have a loving mom, but also one that struggles with her own issues and guilt tripping and criticism is one of them and sometimes passive aggressive underneath that there's still a lot of love that she has for her daughter um you know and and we learn about some of the mom's history like we learn that the mom is trying to do better than where she came from like her mom was an abusive alcoholic and you can tell that the mom had a pretty hard childhood and so she's trying to do better than what her mom did and trying to give Lady Bird what she can um, in terms of uh, chances to be able to go to good schools and that kind of thing. Um, We learn about how the mom's really trying to navigate the financial struggles in the family and the sacrifice that she's having to make. But at the same time, she beats Lady Bird over the head with it that they can't afford X, Y, Z. And, you know, we see moments of the mom being very passive aggressive, being uh, critical of Lady Bird in her room. And the mom's kind of this like anxious personality where she has to, you know, constantly pick up (laughs) things around the house. Um, I mean, it's just they do a great job with the mom's character. My question and a central question I had about the plot in this film has to do with the difference between tropes and cliches. In most storytelling, you know, there are well-established arcs beats, character types, story types. You know, there may not be limits to our imagination, but there are limits to how we exchange our imaginations, how we tell our stories. The real trick as a storyteller is how you take those structural elements that all stories have in common or most stories have in common and do something new or interesting with them. My question about this film and about your analysis is... Do you find that the writer took some fairly standard story beats and did something that elevated them above cliches? I don't think the writer did. I think this is a cliche-heavy film. I would point back to the film. It sort of reminded me of Whip It as a movie that took a lot of tropes. And by doing something new with them, having that central rebellious thing the teenage character does, join Roller Derby with a bunch of other strong female characters took all those tropes and elevated them with your analysis of the characters though do you find that they're cliche written or did you find that the writing and acting was enough to make them fresh and engaging no i found them fresh and engaging like i felt that these were really well written characters i didn't find that they were cliched um because you had nuances between the dynamic of hate and love and the relationship between the mother and daughter and that came out in moments of beauty and connection between them and also moments where it was extremely elevated and Lady Bird and the mom were having a lot of arguments back and forth. I mean, there's lots of scenes I can point to. I mean, and it's even simple scenes. Like there's one at a small family Christmas where you can tell they didn't have a lot of money for Christmas that year because the dad lost his job. And Lady Bird, who can be really dramatic and uh, can come across as an entitled teenager sometimes, is her mom kind of looks sad, like, I'm sorry, this is the best we could do. And she had given Lady Bird like socks and Lady Bird looks at her mom. There's a depth of understanding about the circumstances and she responds with gratitude instead of responding with teenage entitlement which sometimes she leans towards. And so there's like these nice moments like that that show you there's a deeper connection there and understanding between them. You find Lady Bird defending her mom to Danny, her one of her boyfriends, which when he calls her mom scary. And Lady Bird like understands the deeper aspects of her mom. There's a moment where Lady Bird uh, is, is struggling after she has a sexual relationship with a boy and he's kind of a jerk to her about the whole thing. And this, she lost her virginity to this guy. And 
her mom, Lady Bird doesn't have to say what happened, but her mom can tell. There's a lot of things that's said just with body language in that scene. Um, and the mom is like, do you want, to, let's do something together. Let's do our favorite Sunday thing. And they go real estate, like hunting together. And there's just these beautiful moments um, between them that I thought the film really did a great job with. So then would you say that the elevating element of this movie for you is that interplay between mother and daughter? Because the actual story is very standard. Yes, I would say that that's the most powerful dynamic in this film is the mother-daughter relationship and the complexities with how that relationship was written in the film. Well, I agree that the mother-daughter relationship is the core relationship in the film. I just disagree that it was that interesting. I think part of it is that while Laurie Metcalf turns in a great performance, I didn't particularly connect with or engage with Ronan's performance. She was okay. I think a stronger actress might have helped in that role to actually make it seem more authentic, more realistic. And maybe that would have been enough to pull this movie up for me. Although it really goes back to this story has nothing new particularly to say about this particular plot line. Hmm. That's not interesting. I find Saoirse Ronan to be a really strong actress. I mean, she's been nominated before for Academy Awards, right? <laughs> so for her acting, I just, I, I didn't find her acting weak. I, I found it was, I found it was strong and she captured the complexities of being a teenage girl growing up in the nineties and, and in the socioeconomic straddling that she had to do the complexities of her relationship with teenage boys her mom like i i didn't see any issues with her acting in the film well first i don't base my assessment of people's performances on what awards they've won they either do a good job in my opinion or not the other question though and this is something i'm asking because of some of the statements you made do you feel this movie worked better for you because you could, in some ways, identify with the characters? Hmm. Because you've mentioned a number of times she captured the complexities of a teenage girl growing up in the 90s. Do you think that some of this worked better for you because you could actually identify with these characters? Not completely, but at least to the point where you could understand the situations they're putting in, put in and it seemed more authentic and therefore more engaging to you. I mean, it might be because I was a teenage girl that grew up in the nineties, right? The time that the film was made was when I would have also been a teenager. Um, so maybe some of, I could relate more to some of the nostalgia, like, you know, there's a moment where they're listening to, um, like the the 90s music uh and i'm like oh yeah i remember like crash the song crash <laughs> like yeah this brings me back to to my childhood in the 90s so it could have been that now while my relationship with my mother was very different than the relationship dynamic in this film i think i could relate to the dynamic of wanting to be your own person and not feeling like you fit in, but then wanting to fit in at the same time. Like, I, I think I think a lot of teenage girls, regardless of what decade you grow up in, can relate to that dynamic of trying to be different, but also wanting to fit in and the pressures of like navigating that. It could just be the content of it. I mean, this is a very character-driven story, which I love character-driven stories, especially when they get into psychological dynamics. Um, so it, it might just be that of why we responded so differently to this film. Okay. And just to be clear, I don't think you have to literally be able to identify with what a character is going through to appreciate a story. There are plenty of stories I like where... I can't literally identify with what the characters are doing because, you know, they're doing things I've never done. And there are certainly stories that I've read or watched where I can understand, like, the settings the characters are in or the actions they're taking, and it's still terrible. I would point to Stranger Things as an example of that. That's more my era, and it has a lot of the cultural touchstones, and it's still terrible. But I, I, the reason I brought that up, though, is, again, 
I think that particularly for a story where the plot itself is less important than how the characters interact, having that personal engagement or something you can latch on to can elevate something for you. And for me, there's nothing in this, this film or how the characters interact other than just kind of the general family dynamics, which everyone can identify with to some degree. But there's nothing really that said, oh, this is something I can relate to. Yeah, like I took, I mean, one of the second things that I had as like a theme in the film was the idea of like fitting in versus belonging. And I think that's an important distinction that the film really explores. So for example, fitting in, that's fitting in is about changing who you are to be accepted versus belonging is more being accepted just for who you are. You don't have to change anything about yourself. You feel that you belong. And we constantly see this struggle Lady Bird has between fitting in and belonging. And you have some great scenes that showcase that struggle. I do agree with you that that is a theme in this film. My question for you is, how do you think the writer handles it differently or at least in a fresher sense than other films with very similar themes, whether it's like a dark comedy like Heather's, where you have this concept of somebody trying to fit into a crowd and then realizing that is not the best path for them and they want to just be accepted for who they are. Because that's, again, that is a, that's a trope. So how do you think the filmmaker does something to elevate that storyline? I think it's just the, it's the interplay, it's how Lady Bird navigates that. Um, I mean, if we want to like look at it throughout the film from beginning to end, like beginning, she's very insistent on being called Lady Bird. She puts that in quotes as she's writing her name on things. And it's very much about I'm unique. I'm called Lady Bird versus a boring name like Christine. Um, but by the end of the film, we see her in New York. She's at her liberal arts college and she calls herself Christine and she starts introducing herself as that. And you get that sense of she's discovered who she is and she's much more comfortable in her own skin. And it's, it's subtle stuff like that that the film does. Um, there's uh, the idea like where she's pretending to try to be like with the cool kids. And she lies about where she lives in terms of living in the wealthier neighborhood. And she hangs out with them and she even gets involved with one of the boys and he's a complete douchebag. Um, and that's who she loses her virginity to. And then she realizes what a douchebag he is. Like she, there's this scene between them where she's critical of him and she stands up for herself she's coming into her own and I just like the way the film did that with how they developed her character in those ordinary moments where she was able to individuate more and focus on belonging and realize that fitting in was not the answer there's the ball and chain scene where they're like on their way to a school dance and she hears this song and it reminds her of her best friend Julie who she's kind of ditched for the popular girls and it's in that moment she realizes I, because uh, they're criticizing the song. They think it's terrible. And she's like, but I love this song. And my friend lo <laughs> likes this song too. And, and she gets me. And it's just these ordinary moments where they're able to show her character growth. And you don't always have to have cataclysmic trauma to show the growth. I like that they did it in more ordinary moments. Okay. So then it's not necessarily that the writer did anything particularly new or interesting with it. It's just that the way it was presented and the little scenes and character beats made it more engaging for you, basically. Well, in, in terms of the way it was, I guess what was new or interesting to me is oftentimes it ends up being, you know, these really dramatic traumas that have to occur in a character for them to adjust who they are and move forward and like learn the lesson and in this particular film, I don't believe there is any significant traumas per se. There were moments of uncomfort and, and realization moments for her, but they were much more ordinary, typical moments. And 
she was able to grow even in those more ordinary moments. And that's something I thought that was unique that the film did is show that growth through the ordinary versus the extraordinary. And I think it takes talent to do that. I think it takes writing talent. What other, anything else about the plot that you would like to discuss? I mean, I know we had such different responses to this film, which I find interesting. Well, sort of connected to that is, and you clearly thought that these were character traits. There are a lot of things that I just took as forced quirkiness. Now, quirks are an important character building component. A quirk, you know, isn't necessarily something that reflects a core part of your character, but it is something that lends facets to your character, lends some depth to them, makes them more realistic because lots of people have quirks, right? Little things, little ticks, whatever they like to do. One of my problems with this film is that I believe the writer relied more on what I'd consider quirks than on actual character development. To me, and clearly we had different interpretations of this, I found, for example, the entire nickname, where she calls herself Ladybird, and her explanation is, it was given by myself to myself. That is an interesting setup, which I don't really think pays off. This is something that I want to see more of. What is it about that name that had such meaning for you, not just it is a way to differentiate myself. Then it just becomes, oh, so you just gave yourself a nickname to be different. I found a lot of the character moments to fit into that kind of character building. I prefer character moments that actually have some depth to them, have something to say about the character and who they are and where they're going. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, we just definitely interpreted this differently. I kept thinking of Erickson's stages of development, identity versus role confusion, and how they did a good job showing that psychological stage of development that all teenagers go through. And the little quirks were there to, sh to showcase um, how teenagers are navigating identity versus role confusion. Um, so I, I didn't see them as taking away from the film. I saw it as adding to what the director was trying to explore, which is this, the key psychological stage of development for teenagers. Okay. Do you have anything else about the plot? No, I mean, the last theme I really captured was leaving the nest, um, and, you know, carving your own path in life. And I think we've already talked about that. I believe so. So, well, let's talk about the ending. What are did you think there was anything redeeming about the ending, Jeff? Nothing particularly worked nor failed with the ending. The ending was expected, well acted, but not particularly interesting. So it wasn't terrible. So I'm not saying like at the end, I'm like, ah, why did it end like this? It's just, it's the trajectory went exactly where I thought it was going to go. And this is something I, I know I've said a few times. I generally like the acting. Even Ronan is okay. I just don't think she is as good as Metcalf. But yeah, there was nothing about the ending that particularly struck me as anything other than the end of the story. How about you? So like the rest of this film, I thought the ending worked and was satisfying. You know, there's this really sad scene that it's well acted by um, Metcalf, um, where she's dropping her daughter off at the airport uh, to go to New York. And her daughter kind of looks at her and she's like, are, are you going to come in? And she's like, no, parking's too expensive. And so the daughter and dad go in and then the mom's circling around with the car. She's got to pick up the dad and she's just sobbing and crying. And um, she's like trying to keep herself together, but then she loses it. And then she has a change of heart that, oh, I should have gone in. And then she, she tries to pull over, but by the time she goes in, the, the daughter's already, you know, through the gates. Um, and it was just this moment where, like, the mom's trying to be tough. She's trying to stay angry at her daughter because the daughter wasn't honest with her about applying to the East Coast schools. But you can tell that, you know, she breaks down and really cares about her daughter in that moment. Um, and I just thought that was such a powerful, well-acted scene. The other scene I really liked about the ending was when... Uh, Christine gets to New York and she's unpacking in her dorm room and she finds all of these letters that the dad had saved and they're letters expressing 
how much she like is proud of her daughter and loves her daughter and this and that, but she balls them up each time and throws them out. Like she can never find the right words to say. The dad takes all those balled up letters, saves them, and then gives them to Lady Bird. And so like Lady Bird sat and read them and it was just this beautiful poignant moment, I thought. And then it ends with Lady Bird you know, making a terrible mistake, getting drunk, ending up in the hospital because of alcohol poisoning. And then she's going to church. She walks by mass um, the next day and she's reflecting on her Catholic roots and back home in Sacramento. She goes in briefly and then she calls afterwards to tell her mom, thank you. And I love you. And, um, you know, it's just this, it's a really nice moment um, that kind of solidifies the depth of their relationship, even through all the drama that they had in the film. And I found that satisfying. And so, yeah, there was, I thought it wrapped up almost everything it needed to wrap up. There was one side plot that never got wrapped up and that annoyed me, which I'll get to when we talk about best and worst. Okay, then. So what do you like best about this movie, Steph? So, I mean, obviously the acting I found to be really strong between Sir Ronan and Laurie Metcalf. But if I had to, you know, pick a scene that I thought showcased that well, there's this one scene where mom and daughter are arguing and mom is talking about, you know, do you have any idea how much, you know, you, you, it, you've cost us to raise, that kind of thing. She's talking about money and Sersha gets out a notepad and she's like, give me a number. And one day when I am out of here and I make a lot of money, I will pay you back for how much it costs to raise me so I never have to speak to you again. Or so It's just this very, it's a well-acted scene of an argument between mom and daughter that gets at the crux of some of the issues. Um, so I would say that's my favorite scene. What about you? Well, I would agree with that Laurie Metcalf really is the standout thing in this movie. Her performance is great. So what did you not like about this film? So I would say the scenes that I like the least has to do with, there is a priest character. Um, he's a side character and he's a teacher at the Catholic high school that she goes to. And he teaches theater, which Lady Bird does is like a, uh, a class because she thinks it's going to look good on her college um, entrance uh, exams and whatnot. Um, or not entrance exams, but her college application. And so She's in theater and the, the priest, at, at one point, the priest that's teaching it breaks down and you can tell he's struggling with some depression. And we see this scene where he is in the psych hospital and the mom works at the psych hospital. She's, uh, you get the impression that she's a nurse at this inpatient psych hospital. And I just, there's this great, there's this moment between them that it's really well acted, that particular moment where the priest is embarrassed and said, please don't tell your daughter, you know, that where I am, don't let people know. And the mom, you know, is, is very understanding. And she said, of course not. Um, but the problem with these scenes involving the priest is that they never resolve the storyline. It just, he's kind of there and we don't ever get what happens to him. Um, you know, there's, the students are asking where he is and they just said he's like on a leave of absence. But I hate when you're going to put an emotional storyline in a film like this very depressed, um, bordering suicidal priest. Obviously, if he's impatient in the psych hospital, he was so depressed that he was likely suicidal and, um, and not resolve that storyline at all. And so that annoyed me that there was this hanging out there storyline. Okay. What about you, Jeff? That makes sense. Yeah. That opening exposition, I know it's one scene, but it really set the tone for the film. In a more general sense, I just found it a fairly cliched story and that there were really no chances taken in it. It was pretty much a by-the-numbers thing. Yeah, it just did not work for me. But that scene, that opening scene, was the worst part. So what's your final rating for this? I assume it is high. Yeah, no, I gave this one a solid five. Uh, this is one I agree with the critics on. A lot of the critics really liked this film, and I agree with them. To me, this is a definite watch, solid five. Uh, I think that most people will enjoy this film. What about you, Jeff? I gave it a two, uh, solely for the acting. Metcalf standout. The rest of the cast is fine. 
but there are just far better films on the same subject. And I would recommend if you haven't seen it, check out with it. That's it for Lady Bird for me. I would say this is, uh, this is probably the film we've disagreed on the most so far. We have a three point gap, which I think is our largest. I, I think this may equal the man who fell to earth actually. Oh, was that a pretty, that was a pretty large gap as well. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us for Stream On. Tune in next week when we'll be reviewing Spring, currently on Tubi. Stream On is a production of Steph and Jeff Wright's Media. Reproduction of this podcast without written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved, 2020.